Africa. Why doesn't this beautiful continent have an internationally televised race with motorcycles ripping around at supersonic speeds? Everyone likes to see that, right? MotoGP has been to this corner of the world before with the South African Grand Prix, right? So why not have more races here in the future? Good day to you all from wherever you are. I am Moto Misha, and I am delighted to have you watching this video as we take you on a journey back in time to look at the brief history of MotoGP on the continent in South Africa and when we could expect a return to the most beautiful part of the world for Grand Prix motorcycle racing. It may have been 17 years since the last sight of a MotoGP race in Africa, but it seems that the continent's best chance to have a return of the top tiers of motorsports currently comes by way of the Kayalami Grand Prix circuit just outside of Johannesburg, which could well be on track to host an F1 race in the coming years, looking to upgrade its Grade 2 track license to Grade 1. That would mean MotoGP riders could return to race there too. The original circuit was built in 1961, and while it started hosting F1 from 1967, the first South African Motorcycle Grand Prix was held in 1983 as the season opened before returning to a circuit like this sitting at more than 1700 meters above sea level strong considerations have to be made for the three main problems riders and their bikes would face problem number one power output. As altitude increases, air pressure drops, and the thinner air has correspondingly less oxygen available for combustion. Therefore, power output falls. Typically, for every 100 meter increase in altitude, engine output drops by about 1%. So at Kayalami, the bike's engine power output would be about 17% less than normal, meaning a slower overall race. And we don't watch MotoGP to watch bikes go slow, right? We want them to go fast. But mind you, a bike ripping around a circuit at 330 kilometers an hour instead of its normal 360, I don't think anyone would notice the difference. Problem number two, downforce. With lower air density, there's less overall drag to contend with in the first place. And of course, where there's less drag, there's also less downforce. So those front wings you see on MotoGP bikes in the place of turn signals would be less effective in keeping that front wheel from wheeling too high on acceleration out of corners. But hey, who doesn't like watching high speed wheelies, right? I mean, super cool. Problem number three, rider fatigue. With less oxygen in the air, there's less oxygen running in your body's circulatory system, meaning less oxygen reaches your muscles, hence affecting your body's exercise performance. And we all know how much of a workout it is riding a MotoGP bike, right? But with clever scheduling, that allows the riders to acclimatize themselves a couple weeks before the actual race. This problem can be overcome quite easily. Now, despite having these obstacles to overcome in a race at Kayalami, for instance, the race was held successfully for only three years until 1985. So why was the race stripped from the calendar after only three seasons? Well, for the 1986 season, the race was removed due to the apartheid policies which were in place in the country at the time. So many sport associations such as the FIM and the FIA said we don't want anything to do with that. So they refused to race in the country until the lift of these bans in the early 1990s. After the apartheid policies were abolished and the FIM removed the restrictions for South African riders and venues, the round returned on the calendar in 1992 and on a new and shortened variant of the Kayalami circuit. However, due to ongoing financial and political problems in the country at the time, it was decided to cancel the 1993 race. The South African GP fans just could not catch a break. But thankfully, the stars aligned in 1999. The South African Grand Prix returned, albeit to a different circuit in Valcom at the Fakisa Freeway. However, the return of the Grand Prix event seemed almost doomed to fail because in the 2002 event, the South African Department of Health announced one week before the Grand Prix that it was no longer allowed to advertise tobacco products in motorsports. Wow, thanks, great. One week's notice to change all the sponsorship logos, good job health authorities. Yet it wouldn't change anything since most of the country smokes anyway. I bet you the department made an announcement at a huge press conference one day and we're like yeah we are announcing that it is no longer permitted to advertise tobacco products in motorsports buy a donkey he gets off the podium okay guys good job good job with the press conference let's go have some chow have a smoke and get back to work hypocrites this caused a big problem because that year's official sponsor of the race was french cigarette brand Gauloise, and of course this caused significant financial damage as a result which eventually saw the 2004 race as the final south african grand prix to date where valentino rossi edged out max biaggi for victory but see, the overarching problem with not having a race in Africa on the calendar is that the world championship that all the riders and their teams are fighting for cannot truly be called a world championship if not every continent is represented. I mean, there's not a race scheduled in Antarctica because you'd be freezing your nuts off, obviously, but every other continent should be represented on the race calendar, right? I mean, you already have one South African rider firmly in the top class in Brad Binder and another one soon on his way to MotoGP in Brad's brother Darren. Even though you have an alternate option in the 
Moulay El Hassan circuit in Marrakesh, Morocco, South Africa would be the logical place to bring MotoGP back to Africa. Now is as good a time as ever to give the Binder brothers a home race on the calendar with the crazy South African fans blowing the Vuvuzelas in support. I'm picturing it right now and I can say that that would be super cool, although the Vuvuzelas do get pretty annoying after a while. Formula One has the same problem with Africa, unrepresented in the sport, and one of the most popular drivers in the world, and guy who wears sunglasses outside where you're supposed to, Lewis Hamilton, echoed this sentiment. Easy, Africa, and I think bringing for us the attention back into, uh, into Africa and really highlighting the beautiful place that it is, I think that's the most important place that we have to go to. Yes, Lewis, I absolutely agree with everything you're saying, but I bet you all the white executives in the FIM and FIA are probably too scared to go down to Africa, which they really shouldn't be because Africa is full of humans just like everywhere else. I mean, just don't leave your car running when you go inside the corner store for a pack of smokes because it will be long gone when you get back. With all this being said, MotoGP still has a long way to go to become truly global and diverse. And while there are only three current full-time riders from outside Europe in the top class, in Jack Miller, Takaki Nakagami, and of course, SA's own Brad Binder, the sport is heading in the right direction with its global expansion. New non-European riders for next year validate this fact with the Aussie Remy Gardner and of course, the Springbok Darren Binder joining the field. But hey, maybe one day there will be a black rider in MotoGP too, right? I sure hope I'm still alive to see that happen. This is the end of the video. Thanks for watching. If you have stuck around this long, hit that like button, drop a comment, and hit that subscribe button. It really helps the channel out. Until next time, this is Motomisha, checking out. Peace.